Hi, I'm Kate and I make junk journals and today we are going to make this flap stack paper pile. So I'm really excited to be here today. It has been a year and a half since I made my last YouTube tutorial. Um, at the end, I can kind of give you an update uh, if you want. I know a lot of people have emailed me and asked me where I was, and I really appreciate that. That was cool. But most of you just want a tutorial, so I will jump to that, and let's get started. So I've been working on some journals, and this is something that I've kind of done a couple times, and I thought we would try it out because it's pretty simple, but it's pretty interactive. I think the best kind of journaling page is something that is simple and kind of easy to do, but it also takes interaction and is kind of complex because I don't want it to be like too bombarding and I don't want it to be like hard to use or take up like way too much paper. So this is like a really great template. So here is a clip that I made from a journal that I just sold so I don't have it right now but this is kind of like the inspiration um, for the one I have here that um, we're going to kind of borrow from today. This one is a little bit different. Um, instead of having a little clasp, I made this little, I don't know what you call it, stringy loopy thing with circles. And then we just fold open these and I only have three instead of four little flip outs. And then here I just have a little lace pocket and then a big wide belly band back there. And from these, I put little be out of you guys because why not I feel like if anything's ever just like one layer and you can't do anything more I felt like guilty like oh, this should be more interactive which is so ridiculous I don't know why I feel that way because I love other people's journals where they're like smooth and you don't have to like open a million pockets and tucks but for some reason this is just the way I am so I'm gonna just add a million little flaps so here is that and I'm pretty proud of myself because I didn't even make little pockets look at me restraint I can do it um, and then here is just a little piece of paper and that envelope and that closes. And it's fun because this has texture on it, so it's kind of interesting, but you can also write on top of it so there's more writing space. And then you close it up and keep everything secret. So we're going to kind of do something based off of these and um, we will see what happens. But that's the, that's the basic concept that I'm going to work with. Okay, so I'm just gonna choose some paper that is kind of, like it's not too contrasty or busy, but there's still some fun texture and some cute color. So it's just kind of like a neutral, cute, pinkish background thing. And, oh, ooh, what size should we make it? Usually I make five by seven books, so maybe we should just stick with that. I feel like maybe we should just stick with that. So we're gonna go with seven inches tall. Oh my gosh. The blades are so old. I really need to get a new paper cutter because I have like fuzzy edges. But for some reason, I just can't bring myself to buy that. So I just will continue to use this really crappy, oh, and broken paper cutter. And every time my husband sees me use this, he's like, why don't you get a new paper cutter? And I'm like, because I feel like they always just break anyway. So if I get a new one, it will just break. I mean, this little cutter has worked really hard for me and has made so many journals. So I'm grateful for it, but I think it's time for a new one. Past time, actually. So if we do five by seven, then it's seven inches tall and then it will be 10 inches but folded but because you know when you have a book it kind of like curves a little bit you need a little bit more room so we're gonna cut it to be a little bit more like 10 and a quarter so that this can kind of be an, like more of an outer page yeah nice little fuzzy lines just the way I like it or at least I'm gonna pretend like I like it because this was happening sometimes if it's really fuzzy I'll just kind of trim off the fuzzies which makes a lot of really great little paper mess Woohoo! so I'm just gonna fold this in half um, sound effects always help things go better your folds will be straighter and your stuff will be nicer if you make a noise while you do it I'm pretty sure that's like proven science okay so let's put stuff on this these little taggy things are just like little what is that three by four three by four yes 
and I'm pretty sure I got these from Gwen Offit. Her Etsy shop is like my favorite place to get. I get her little journaling cards. She just like has a bunch of scrap of paper scraps that she cuts into cute little three by four cards. And so you get a big stack. And then also her ephemera packs are like my very favorite. I love it. And I am so excited. I've been telling myself I want to make a big order soon from her, but I'm making myself try to use up what I have, you know, use the stuff at the bottom of my craft box that I have not been using. Cause I really don't like having like excess stuff. I like to keep it simple because I don't manage stuff very well. So the fewer stuff I have, the more I can function. So, but a lot of my stuff has come from her and I'm gonna be getting more stuff from her soon if I can use up this stuff. I'm so excited. Oh, and I have a discount code and I'll put that right here. Cause I can't remember it right now. It's probably something like Kate is amazing or something. And if it's not, it should be that. She gave me a discount code because I've mentioned her so much on my site and I get to use it and you get to use it. But other than that, I'm not like sponsored or affiliated with her. And um, I just really, really love her shop. Okay, back to this. So two little cards and I bet I have some cards. Here's what I brought today. Eh. And sometimes whining noises also help you be stronger. Ooh, that's fun, a calendar? We could be all cute and besty or florally. Oh, that's kind of cute. Something that I really try to do is only buy kind of like spring colors, light hues, things that kind of like have a light and bright, happy feel. And if you kind of buy the same style of things, then everything you have goes together easier, easier. <laughs> I'm smart. But this also helps me with like having too much stuff. If I have so many different styles, then I have to have like a bajillion of everything. When I was first junk journaling, I had everything. I would just like get every style and try everything. Um, but then I slowly learned that I really like these bright and happy colors. And so I just kind of stick with that. That's my story. All right. Okay, wait, hold on. I don't like this. I like this. A little more blue, a little bit more. It's not monochromatic. What is it when it's like two colors? I don't know. I actually have an art degree, so don't tell any of my college professors that I don't know that term, but <laughs> they can't grade me now, suckers. Okay, and then I also wanna put a envelope because I really like having an envelope like that. What did I even bring? Does one of you have an envelope? Yes, okay. So I have three envelopes, two boring blank ones, and one cute fun one that might be too big. Let's see. Does it fit perfect? That is not gonna work though, now that I think about it, because if it covers everything, then how will these flaps go down? Sorry, cute little envelope. We'll have to use you another day. And we'll have to use boring white one. We'll do this one and we will put stencils on it or make it cute or something. In fact, we'll start now by getting some Tattered Rose Tim Holtz Distress Ink, which I get from scrapbook.com, but you can also get it from lots of craft stores. But I do have an affiliate link for scrapbook.com should you want to buy it from them and check out all their other amazing stuff. So now that we have our elements, oh, we should probably ink this too. This one we're gonna do speckled egg. I use three colors for like every project. This is weathered wood and it's kind of a little bit more grayish, a little bit more muted. And then this speckled egg, a little bit more blue and bright. And then this tattered rose is a pink and it kind of goes with all of my little springy theme. Once again, if you kind of pick a style, it's super nice to have everything kind of coordinate. We'll give this guy a little something something. Okay. So now that we've got that, I'll start with um, this envelope. And the glue I'm using is Beacon Fabri-Tac. I also use Beacon 3-in-1, either one. To me, they're the same glue. I have no idea what is the difference. I really don't have a preference and I just buy kind of whatever's available. Okay, so I just glued along the edge and then a little dot so that I can wrap it around the back. And I make sure there's like a tiny bit of room so it's not like right on the line because you kind of want it to bump out so it has room to swing and it's not like pinching on the corner. We don't want our little envelope to struggle. And now because we didn't just glue the whole thing and we just glued a little bit there and then a line there, you can see on this side, um, I was able to put something back there through that little kind of, I guess technically belly band tucky pocket belly band secret thing. So we'll be able to create something similar there. 
See? Possibilities are everywhere. And I just can't glue something down. Everything has to be a pocket. What are we doing again? Ju 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 Washi tape. Here it is. This is the washi tape I brought today. So washi tape is usually not very strong. So um, we're going to glue on the washi tape so that it's strong, especially in this case because it is what is attaching the papers to the paper. It's the attacher. It is what is putting the flaps on. So we're gonna measure out a little piece and then we're going to get some glue. I'm gonna just make a little glue line at the bottom and a glue line at the top. And then we're gonna say probably that's a good spot. I don't want it to be right on top of each other. I want it to kind of be um, a wonky little slant thing. So we're gonna do that. I'm gonna put that on there. And then I'll wrap it around the back. Smooth that down. There we go, little flappity flap. And again, I put a little space right there because I don't want it to be pinched right around the edge or it's gonna kind of struggle bending over. And then I'm going to take another piece and just kind of do the same thing on the inside to kind of secure it and make it look cute. Rip that piece, glue the edges, and we'll stick it on. Oh, I think I did too much. All right, there we go. And we'll just smooth that down. Okay, now we're gonna put this one on. And should we use a different one or the same one? Let's do different, especially because I like how this is like flowers, and then that's flowers. And so it's, you know, kind of repeating stuff, but it's not too close together. Trying to eyeball measure that. Rip and glue. And we're gonna glue that. And then I'll line it up. Just kind of make it look balanced. All of this should go in a little bit because um, this is, I don't wanna put too much stuff right at the binding of my book because um, as that kind of gets fuller, it'll kind of wrap around and it, it'll get too tight and it won't turn well. So just kind of avoid at least like a quarter inch um, toward your spine of your book. Okay, let's put this down. That is good. And smooth that down. Okay, and now we'll do this underneath side. Once again, see there's a little crack. It's not like a super big crack, but it's just not right on the end. You can kind of see that little gap, and then that gives enough space to flip without, if it was like right on the edge, it would kind of like not lay flat. Get another piece. Put some glue. And we'll just put that right there. Okay. That is looking good. Now we'll do this one. And I think I'm gonna use this pink one just so it blends in. I love washi tape. You know what to do. Glue both sides, get that little flap on. And we're gonna put it a little bit away from the edge. Don't wanna do it like that. That would be terrible and it would make it hard to use. I wouldn't mind if my washi tape wrapped around the back. It didn't, it's like right on the edge. But if it did, then it actually kind of strengthens the spine. So that would be cool. In fact, that's a good idea to strengthen the spine because sometimes when I make heavy ones, I wanna make sure that the paper isn't gonna rip when it's sitting in the book. So this is a great way to reinforce the spine of the page and then it will kind of help blend in with that as well. So yeah, I like that idea. Okay, is that crooked? It's totally a little crooked. So even if it's a little crooked, we'll just call that an exciting little angle. You can make yours straight, be better than me. But everything is always a little wonky, so it kind of blends in and it won't be a big deal. My journals are really well made and they are sturdy and they are cute and they are interactive, but they are not perfectly straight or without wonky little errors. So that's just me being honest. So we put glue on that and we're just doing the underside. So we can be done getting all these flipper flappity things on. There we go. Okay, so we have the basic construction 
So this will flap first, then this, then this, no, then this, then this. Yeah, that looks good. We'll do it that way. So we have our little paper pileup. Ooh, that's what I should call this one, paper pileup. Yay, I love it when I think of the names because I'm always like paper on paper journal pockets. Why do YouTube videos need names? Maybe I should just start being like tutorial one, tutorial two. Um, anyway, this is going well. So now uh, we just kind of have to figure out what um, are each of these little flaps doing? Are they just blank for you to journal on? Do we add pockets? Do we add a million fold outs? Do we, what do we do? So we'll go through each one and let's figure it out. Follow our hearts, see what happens. So let's start, let's just go top down, why not? We have this and let's start simple because this is the first flap. So we don't want to be like, ooh, look at all these mysteries of this thing and be like, our first flap open, the coolest thing. And then everything else is like, well, that wasn't as fun as the first one. So we'll be like, you think this will be boring and simple, but really it's fun and amazing. I'm overthinking this, I think, <laughs> but that's what we're gonna do. So we'll just keep this blank. Look at me keeping things blank. So I'm just gonna stencil it. This is actually a stencil I made. I made this and I was so excited for this design and oh my gosh, you guys, I got a Cricut. So many things that I have to tell you. Yeah, a year ago I got a Cricut for Christmas and it changed my life. And let's just say everything in my house is now labeled with cute little font stickers of vinyl everywhere. Um, but I got some plastic and I, because I really love using stencils. This is a stencil that I super love and use all the time um, and I'm, kind of picky about the kind of stencils I want and I don't see a lot of great stencils. And then also sometimes stencils are too thick and I like thin stencils um, because then they don't like destroy the little sponge thingies on these little dabber thingies. Anyway, I found, I bought a bunch of different kinds of plastic and found my favorite kind and got this all cut and it's beautiful. And then I tried to cut another one and it didn't work very well. I don't know why, sometimes it like skips half of it. I'm gonna have to learn how to cut on plastic and make stencils. But anyway, I made this and I'm really happy and I love it so much and I was like, oh my gosh, I should offer it on my Etsy site. But it's, they're really hard to make and they don't always come out. So if I can figure that out, I'll totally offer this. But if not, you guys can all just be jealous of me. So there you go. <laughs> and today you can just be jealous because I haven't figured it out yet. So um, I'm just going to use the pink, the tattered rose, and I don't want to like do like a full on stencil like across the whole thing. I want to just like do a little path I guess through it, like that, so that the edges are like blurry. So you see that? Come on, that is a great stencil pattern. I love it so much. And I should probably do the edges I guess a little bit. And just so it looks like it is all the way finished and it's not just a little bit of texture, but there's some little design. We'll put a stamp. I got this from scrapbook.com. I love it so much. This is my favorite acrylic block that I've seen. And I like that it has these little bumps because it helped, it makes it like easier to hold somehow. People were thinking when they made that. Okay, I kind of have lots of flowers going on. I always have lots of flowers going on. I kind of like flowers. Let's just do this little leafy berry guy. And I'm gonna use weathered wood. I like the way weathered wood stamps. It kind of like tends to bleed a little bit more, I feel like, or maybe just the way I use it. Maybe I push too hard, I don't know. And I'm gonna put it in the upper corner because if I put it down here, like everything's too heavy. We got like this, if we do this, it kind of like lifts some of the design up. I'm just gonna put that there and be like, yeah, that's so cute. Are you guys proud of that stamp? I'm getting better at stamping, not gonna lie. Pretty proud of myself. I know it's just a simple stamp and I probably did push a little too hard and maybe it's not perfect, but I used to be a bad stamper and now I am an adequate stamper. So I'm pretty pleased. So that seems, that's good. That looks finished and designed and great. And then you're gonna go, what? What the heck is going on here? Thought this was gonna be a fun journal. Don't worry, it will be. We will not leave that blank. We will, what did I do? What did I do with this? Oh yeah, little flippy flappy guys. We'll do that. That's a good idea. I have some graph paper. And I think I'm gonna use the whole thing. Okay, wait, wait. I have an idea. This is what, okay. So what I'm worried about is if I make this the right size and then bend it, 
then my fold here and these little lines will be like in the middle of it, which you could totally do and that's fine. But I want that to be on the edge. So I'm gonna measure from the middle here. I'm gonna want to start like, I don't know, probably there. And then I'm gonna fold this one under like that. And then here I will um, make it a little bit lower than that fold line so that there's room and put a little crease and then come back and fold it the other way and crease it down. So it's going to be like that. Then I'm going to just continue to fold and I'm just going to make it each fold a little bit longer than the other one so that it lays flat and then the corners kind of wrap around and pinch rather than be right against each other. And here's the little edge. Uh, you know, I'm actually just gonna cut that off. It is long enough for the likes of these little squares. Okay, and then I'm going to cut, um, how big should it be? Probably in between there. Okay, so now we've got this little foldy thing and we could turn this into a pocket, so <laughs> if we can, then we should, right? So I'm gonna take this little piece and just glue it here, here, and here, and we're gonna stick it on the bottom of this. Oh, but first we're gonna put some, some stuff on it. Let's do Tattered Rose. We'll just do the edge of this. And on the very edge, I'm just gonna rip it a little bit because it will look so cool. People will be like, ooh, what a cool little ripped finish. But even though I say that kind of sarcastically, I do like the more little details um, of design and interest and kind of variety that you can put really kind of helps um, the whole thing look put together and thought of and cared for. And then it just, um, I don't ever want a piece to look neglected or just like slapped on. So I love details. And now I'm going to glue it. I'm gonna glue it on the back side. Ah! I'm gonna glue it on the back side there, there, and there. Okay, and we only need that much glue because uh, this is really lightweight paper, so that will be plenty. And then, oh, I should probably fold this up. <gasps> no, I did this backwards. Okay, hold on. I didn't keep track of the way I folded it. Okay, I folded it like this now, and now I'm going to put it on. And that was me not paying attention to what I was doing. So remember how I folded each of these kind of like bigger, bigger, and bigger? Well, this was supposed to be this outside one. And then for some reason, I switched it in my brain without realizing that it needed to fold from the outside in. Anyway, it just messed up and so it's just gonna have to fold like that. That is totally fine. Accordion style totally works. And now you can see this fancy little ripped edge that I'm so proud of apparently. Okay, so um, this is kind of like floppy and like ah, so we want some way to control it. So I'm gonna take um, my favorite flower and these come from my friend Betty. She has a Etsy shop that I will put in the description as well as her code, but she makes these for me because I love them so much. I use them all the time for clasps like this. So I'm going to use two and kind of stack them on top of each other and we're gonna glue this down so that they are one flower. And um, once I have those together, I'm gonna kind of measure where I want this. I And I want um, just kind of to cut right below these two large petals, just like that. And then that's gonna be my little clasp. I can add a little bit of speckled egg, give it a tiny bit of dimension, and then I'm going to put a little line of glue right here so that that can lay and hold down that paper. So I'll move that while this dries. So then this little flower can be a tab to hold that. And then when you open it, it's all together. And it seems like, oh, it just opens once. And you're like, nope, it opens a bajillion times. Oh, and it's a secret pocket. So let's get a little tag. Like, what's this? Does that work? Maybe that's a little too small. Or maybe it's perfect. Are these the same size? I don't want to do something the same size 
Um, I want a little bit of variety and height. Oh, that's cute. Is that the same size? But will it look cute? Yeah, that's varied enough. I like it. So let's give this a little edge so that it has some contrast. And maybe like a little word or something? I feel like it needs something else. Ooh, what if we, what is this, drama queen? Hmm, I don't super love the phrase drama queen. I mean, I love to be dramatic, and I do love the idea of being a queen, uh, but I don't like drama. So if it said dramatic queen, I would totally use that. But drama queen, we don't need no drama. Be authentic, best day ever. You can do anything, but not everything. So wise. The journey is the destination. What? The journey is the destination? Isn't that like the opposite of what everybody says? Isn't it like the journey that is the destination? Oh, the journey is the destination. <gasps> okay, I totally read that. Like the point of a journey is the destination, but this is saying that the destination is the journey, that the journey is what you're just, it doesn't matter what the destination is. So that's really funny and embarrassing. Now I understand and now I agree. I would use it if it could fit, but it won't. So I'm gonna say be authentic. And we're gonna just cut that B. Authentic. And let's cover up this whole drama queen business. Don't be a drama queen. Be authentic. See how deep and meaningful this junk journal is? And I'm going to um, get a brad. Let's do rose gold. And I'm going to um, just kind of poke that through. And then I'm just going to uh, smash it through both. Be authentic. And then we're going to stuff that up the chimney right there. This one can join it. Or maybe we just need one now because this is exciting enough. In fact, it might be a little tall now. I'm actually gonna trim off like a tiny, tiny bit and uh, put the bottom and then I think that's gonna sit better in there. Yeah. And then this little thing can kind of swivel in front of that. And I like, I like what's going on here. But I feel like it still needs a little something, something. Maybe a piece of lace. Throw some lace on things that don't look finished and magic will happen. So I'm just gonna eyeball cut that. Eyeball and then cut, not eyeball cut. I do not know how to cut it with my eyeball. Here is a stripe of blue, strip of blue, stripe of line of blue. And I'll just kinda put that on there. Which I like because this paper is really thin and so like if we're putting a tag in and out, kinda worried about the strength of that edge tearing. So it will be stronger with that little piece of lace. See now, doesn't that look a million times more finished? So now we're gonna accordion this up because that's how I made it. Okay, get that to sit smashed down there. It kind of bubbles up because now there's a lot, you know, there's that brad and other stuff, so that's totally fine. Um, but it's laying pretty nicely despite the fact that there's a bunch of stuff under it. So now we have like, oh, I think this is gonna be a boring journal. What, it's the most exciting journal ever? And then what should happen next? We could just keep it simple pocket, um, especially because it's like closer to the spine and I don't want a lot of bulk on this part of the book because that's gonna weigh down the book and make it harder to close. So let's keep this one simple as well, but still a little exciting. Let's find some paper like this little notepad paper. So that says extra right there um, at the bottom and I'm gonna fold right there to that line of extra and I'm going to cut right below so it matches. Let's see, I'm gonna rip right there so I know where to cut and I'm gonna use my cutter since I want this line to be straight. I cut it and then this is rounded. So I'm gonna get my paper rounder that I just got. I've got a million of these lost and broken. And this one I really like because it has different sizes and it's been working really nice so far. Okay, I'm gonna use the speckled egg on the edges. Then we're gonna just glue this, this, and this and make a pocket. There we go, put that on there. And now I need a little tag for that. Perfect. It's already super cute and has flowers, just like we're going flower theme. Put some stuff on the borders, make it look like it has mention. Make it pop out and stand up against the background. And let's put some ribbon on this. I'm gonna use my crocodile, a little hole, and I'm going to cut it first. And then I'm gonna just put it there. And I'm gonna get an eyelet and push it through, and then we will smash it with the crocodile. And 
now we have a bit of ribbon at the top. So now we can stick it in there. And I should probably, I always like forget, I think it's this way. Yeah, that looks good. So if you do it at that angle, then it just looks like a flat top thing and it's not as good. So I'm gonna do it like that. And then pretty sure we need like a key right there, right? Is that what you were thinking? We need a key right there? That's what I thought too. So we're gonna take a key, stick it on here. Should we do weathered wood again? Dab that on there. It's kind of like a bendy key. I'm gonna straighten it a little bit. I think it's just a bendy key. We'll see how it stamps. Okay. Ah! Dang it. Actually, it's totally fine and it's kind of fun. I took this off to straighten it and then for some reason I thought if I like gently set it back, it would just stick, which was foolish. But now I'm gonna do that. There we go. And now it just looks like, look, it's so rustic with a little ink splatter. I mm, kind of like it even. Okay, three of the flaps done. And this one is easy because we just have to stick something in it. So this is like the world's cutest stationery. I'm just gonna use that. Fold it in half, stick it in there. And boom, that totally is awesome. And I love it. Now, what are we gonna do with this? What did I do here? I did... Um, a big belly band with a little lace pocket. Should I do the same thing? Oh, I should put some texture on. I'm gonna use this one and just kinda not go across all of it. Just kind of like brush across some of it so it's kind of hazy. That's good. Should I do this side? Yes, I should. And the same thing, I'm just gonna do it not everywhere. Do this side maybe a little bit darker in some places. There we go, I like that. Okay, this looks like a thing. Something about, oh, I know what I wanna do. Here, I really like this dotted paper. Oh, I should make this for the tag that slips in behind it because it's kind of sturdy. That's what I'm gonna do. I'll put this right here and I'm gonna get something else. I'm gonna use this paper because it's like scrapbook paper and writing paper in one. And I'm gonna trim off the very bottom so that there's more writing paper. I'm gonna trim off this whole cute part and then I'm gonna see how much I need this is what I'm gonna do for this flower paper on the back so I want it to come in and have a border around so I'm just gonna mark right there and pinch it maybe rip it a little so I can see it and so that's where I'm gonna cut it I'm gonna fold that a little bit and make sure I know where that is and then I'll cut it so now we have this paper, um, and let's use our pink for this. Put it on the edges, and then I'm going to just glue these two sides to form a big wide belly band. Okay, that's looking good. I love the way this looks. This is like so cute and happy and just love it. Okay, so now we're gonna take this, and this is what's gonna be um, this. So I'm going to, um, you know, we glued it, so it can't be as wide as it. It has to make room for the glue. So we're just gonna guess that that is probably a good size. And I'll pinch that there, and I will cut it. And it's not gonna be that tall. Let's see, if I slip it in, maybe that's, too wide. I'm gonna just shave off a little edge. I don't want it to be a struggle to have it go through. Yeah, that goes in much easier. We're gonna wiggle it down to where it's poking out. We don't want it touching all the way to the bottom, just a little bit. And then here, we're gonna have it come up to about there. Fold that and cut it. And then I wanna put a tab on it. We're gonna grab this super cute do later tab because I think it's fitting because we're gonna kind of shove it at the very back. So obviously you don't wanna put urgent things here because it's hard to find. Okay, but that's, we're gonna need to cut a little bit more uh, down on that. Cut along that row. Yeah, that's a good height. And I'm gonna round the edges with this four millimeter round edge, the smaller one, so that it's just like a little bit of a round edge. I don't wanna commit to like crazy round. I just don't want a pointy edge. And then we're gonna really lightly do some speckled egg. And that will just kind of give it a little pop off the background. Um, let's see, this has stickers? Yeah, I'm just gonna peel it off and stick it on. Yeah, <laughs> come on little tab. Oh, 
Ah, there we go. So we'll have our do later, and we'll stick that on. And we'll slip that back there. That is great. Hmm, and I was gonna do the lace pocket thing, but I think this is so cute that I don't want to ruin anything. And it's plenty busy, there's enough. If you need one more pocket, then I think that you're just ridiculous and there will be plenty of other pockets in this journal, I promise. Is that it? Oh, we gotta figure out a way to close it. We're almost done though, this is looking good. So when we close it, we gotta figure out how to clasp it, which I think we're gonna do the same as this. I'm gonna make little circly things. There's probably a term for this, circly string closure. I think I'm gonna use um, some of the scraps from, from this underneath part. And I'm just going to find something kind of cute. What would look good? Something kind of simple, I guess. I think I'm gonna mainly do white and then have it be like a little bit of stuff. So I'm gonna get that star just a tiny bit yeah, in the corner. And then for that one, let's do that. This is just a, does it not say what millimeter? Oh, I have a ruler, three fourths of an inch. And I love this. This is like such a good size. Let's ink up the edges to really help them pop. And then I'm gonna get, um, oh, I didn't even look. Can I put things in there? Oh yes, oh, thank goodness. I should have done this first to make sure that I can put a little brad through it and not like ruin what's behind it. So that worked out, that's lucky. Maybe I should do one rose gold and one silver. So it's like, look how cute hodgepodgey I am. It's so random and fun. Let's poke that through, semi in the middle, and I'll poke that through, semi in the middle. Ooh, that one is really good. That's like one of my best middle ones. That one is cute, but not as good as that one. So then I'm gonna start with this top one, poke it through somewhere, Ugh, just like that. I don't mind the backs of brads just hanging out in places randomly. We'll turn it to the side, see? So cute. Okay, this one has to be a little bit lower because if we put it there, you know, that would not, it wouldn't show. So we're gonna put it here-ish. And that is great because it's right behind that tag. So that's a really good place for it because it will be hidden. So we'll get this tucked in there. And then I'll put this up and I just get a string. Got this on Amazon. I have, it comes in like a bunch of colors. I can put the link for that too. It's so nice. I only brought white today, but I have at my house like, you know, black, silver, gray, tan, gold. So I'm doing a square knot right now, which is right over left, left over right. And then I'm gonna squeeze that down and then just snip it kind of right on the edge of where the circle is. I'm gonna wrap it around one time and just kind of um, clip it way down here. And then I'm going to put a little knot in it, trim it a little bit, and kind of unfray the edge up to the knot. So it's like wild and free, frayed end. It looks a little bit more like a tassel-y thing or like that. There we go. Oh my gosh, I actually super love this. And we did it. This is our beautiful page. And when we undo it, we have so much fun explosion of excitement. I really like this page, it's fun. And it's cute, I love all the colors. It's very sweet. Next time we'll just finish up the back page and that will be fun. I'll show you how to make my swivel belly band. Anyway, thanks for crafting with me today. If you make this or anything inspired by this tutorial, I would love to see it. You can email me at katesjunkjournals at gmail.com or you can tag me on Instagram at, at katesjunkjournals. And here, are some people's projects inspired by other YouTube tutorials that I've made. Thank you so much for showing them to me because I love to see them. It is really fun and it makes me feel really connected to the people who are in the crafting community because I really get a lot out of watching other people and so it's really fun to see stuff inspired by my tutorials. I love this community and I love sharing ideas and I love being inspired by all the things that I see. Please make sure you like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you next week. And for those of you who are interested in why I randomly disappeared for a year and a half, um, I just got really overwhelmed. And my husband was like, you could just take a break from making YouTube videos. And I was like, no, I can't because if I miss one week, I will just stop. I know myself really well. I know that it's like I have to keep the momentum 
and if I just like let a ball drop like it's gonna be really hard for me to keep going but I was really going through a hard time and I decided okay I can just take a few weeks off um, a year and a half later <laughs> I'm finally doing it again just like I knew see I know myself um, but I wish I could say that it was just fine but I really had the hardest time of my life and it was a really great learning and growing experience and I am fine and everything's fine um, we just all go through things that stretch us and try us and I probably wouldn't like share so much if I haven't had so many people message me and reach out um, and I really do love this community and so I do want to share that with you because it's really easy to be like everything's fine but it was hard and but everything was is fine and the biggest thing that I learned is I I am a member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, and I have always had a relationship with Jesus Christ, but the biggest thing that this time in my life has taught me is to rely on Him and have a personal relationship with Him. And before, I would hope that He can carry me through hard things, um, but now I know He can, and it's been such a great experience to be able to learn how to rely on Him and how to grow through Him. and what it means to have him in your life and to have him heal you and help you overcome. And I'm not gonna turn this channel into you know a religious channel, um, but I can't talk about having a hard struggle without saying that because that is the truth and that is my experience. So it's been beautiful, it has been wonderful, it's been hard, and I'm continuing to learn and grow and I'm better for it. And I'm I'm grateful that I still have this amazing community and that as soon as I hop back on Instagram a couple months ago, all my friends are just right there. I love this group and I love all the people who watch my videos. And anyway, I'm really excited to be back. So I am planning on, it's my goal to go back to making weekly videos. So hopefully I'll be able to do that. This is my dad's new YouTube studio. He moved it from his office to now this one is in his home. It's a little different, but it's also closer to my house. So um, I'm going to try. I have everything I need. I have a wonderful community. I have my dad's amazing studio. And so I'm like, I really just want to do this again because it's a really great opportunity that I have and it's really fulfilling and fun. So thanks for joining me today and I can't wait to keep coming up with projects to share with you guys. And like I said, please send me messages of your projects because I would love to see it and show other people so that um, we can all be inspired by each other. Okay, that's it for this week and I'll see you next time. I'm like nervous. I'm quite a while since I've made a YouTube tutorial. Tutorial. Whoa, 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 whoa. And today we are gonna make this, oh, what was it called? I should have written it down. It was a good one flap stack that's what it should be a flap stack that's also a good one but it wasn't a flap stack pile something pile I have to say it right now and I don't remember what it was paper pile we're just gonna say paper pile do we like flap stack better slap stack paper pile done